Today's episode is sponsored by KiwiCo, but more on what's inside these boxes in just a bit. Hint, it's science, in case you didn't know who I was, which you might not. On July 16, 1945, physicist Enrico Fermi was standing about 10 miles away from what would become ground zero for the world's first atomic explosion. But instead of simply observing the blast that he personally helped bring into being during the Manhattan Project, the scientist that he was, he was tearing up and dropping small sheets of paper before, during, and after the explosion. Once the blast wave reached him about 40 seconds after detonation, he used how these pieces of paper fell through the air to estimate that the blast yield for the nuclear bomb, the Trinity test, was about 10 kilotons of TNT equivalent. It turned out later to be calculated as 20 kilotons of TNT. He was that close just by looking at how pieces of paper move through the air. Enrico Fermi had a legendary ability for estimating very complicated phenomena for almost no data at all. He became so good at this, in fact, that the estimate of this kind became the Fermi estimate. And I'm going to show you how to do it today to estimate nearly anything. Uh, the, the air is moving around at about 2 kph in here, by the way. Now entering the facility. Today's program will be all about exercising your brain and thinking about how to think better. So if you want to follow along with me, feel free to pause the video at any time, grab a sheet of paper and a calculator, preferably a TI-89 titanium. We begin with the mathematical basis for Fermi's legendary estimating ability, dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is a way of relating units to one another to quickly convert one unit to another. So an easy example of this would be to ask you how many seconds are in a year. This is something that's difficult to know off the top of your head, but this is where we apply our analysis. We begin with a number that we know, like uh, there are 365 days in a year, right? Well, we also know, relating the units, that there are 24 hours in a day, and 60 minutes in an hour, and 60 seconds in a minute. Now, as long as all the units cancel out top and bottom, and we're only left with the unit that we want, then we can multiply across the top, divide across the bottom, and bam, we get the seconds in a year, a little over 31 and a half million. This seems like a simple process, and it is. That's the power of it. But we can do something a lot more difficult than just seconds in a year. Why don't we try something a bit more worthy of our newfound abilities? How about something with your hair? Ooh. That's definitely worthy, baby. A few years ago, when I was still trapped in a formless, emotionless void, one of you nerds asked me a question that I couldn't possibly know off the top of my head about the top of my head. You asked me, would all of my golden locks laid end to end reach the moon? Well, it sounds like a sciencey fact you may have heard of before about human beings, but it's perfect for a Fermi estimation, so let's apply the Fermi estimation process. The first thing that we're going to do is identify and break down the problem. What do we need to know to make a good guess? Well, we need to guess the distance to the moon, the number of hairs on my head, and the average length of those hairs. The next thing that we're going to do is just throw out some numbers and dare to be imprecise here, because over and under estimates tend to cancel out. That's the real secret of this process. How far away is the moon? Is it one kilometer away? No. Is it a million kilometers away? No. Well, it's hard to say where we should land if we don't apply the third step, which is bounding the problem. Use figures and numbers that you have some confidence to start with. For example, I know that space starts 100 kilometers above your head and that the sun from Earth is about 150 million kilometers away. So for the moon, order a magnitude I'm going to say it's 100,000 kilometers away to start, and for the number of hairs on my head, I'm going to say about 10,000, because 1,000 sounds like too few, and 100,000 sounds like way too many. And finally, for the length of my hair, I know it's about the length of my forearm, which is a third of a meter or one foot. Now, it's time for the dimensional analysis. I'm guessing there are 10,000 hairs on my head, and each one of those hairs is 0.3 meters long. One moon distance for us as a unit is going to be 100,000 kilometers. And if we multiply and divide, cancel out the units, 
at a glance, you can tell that all my glorious hair laid end to end is not going to make it to the moon. Now, 3% to the moon is a long way, but we'd estimate, based on this dimensional analysis, that my hair, no human's hair, laid end to end would never reach the moon. Even those weird humans that play guitar outside of Whole Foods and Birkenstocks in 2021 some reason. <laughs> So, we have our Fermi estimate, but it doesn't stop there. The final step in the process is a sanity check. Does this number make sense with everything else we know about the world? Well, again, like I said, this hair end-to-end -end fact sounds like other sciencey facts you may have heard of, like how long all your blood vessels would be laid end-to-end, -end, and then you would definitely die. But I think you have way more blood vessels in your body then you do have hairs on your head. So I think it being a lot less than something like that crazy distance makes sense. So Aria, could you do the final calculation? Beep, 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 bop. Supercomputers are really fast. You see, we came up with a value that was within 50% of the true value. We were off, yes, but we were so close that we still answered the question completely correctly. This is true mathematical power. If you follow these steps with rigor, you should be able to estimate things that you have no business knowing off the top of your head. And I really want to prove this to you today. Let's try something a lot more difficult. Growing up, my favorite animal had to be the great white shark. So here's the Fermi problem for me. How many great white sharks are swimming off the coast of California right now? That sounds nearly impossible to guesstimate without looking anything up, right? Well, witness the full power of an operational Fermi estimate as we use educated guesses to hopefully get within proximity of the correct answer. Now, being my favorite animal, I do know some facts about great whites, but this is going to be difficult even for me. Pay attention to how I follow our Fermi steps. I know off the top of my head that your chances of getting attacked by a shark are about 1 in 4 million. If we compare that number to the 7 billion people in the world, or thereabouts, that should give us a ballpark number of yearly shark attacks. I'm now going to guess that the minority of attacks are fatal, maybe 5 out of every 100. I also know that just 3 shark species make up the majority of fatal attacks, so I'll say that only 1 out of every 3 fatal attacks per year are by great whites. But not every great white will commit a fatal attack. This number has to be small based on the total population. So I will further say that only one out of every 100 great white sharks in its lifetime has a chance of killing anyone. Finally, I can only think of three main habitats for great white sharks off the top of my head. Hawaii, South Africa, and the coast of California. So I'll say that of all the great whites we ended up with in our dimensional analysis, only one out of every three of them are off of the coast of California swimming and eating seals right now. Are these weird numbers to use that I'm almost pulling out of nowhere? Yes. Could we be way off high or low? Yes, but I'm trusting the method. Now, after all that admittedly extreme guesstimation, it would be pretty impressive if we could get close to the actual number of great white sharks swimming off the coast of California right now, wouldn't it? Okay, so I did not ask Arya to calculate anything until just a few minutes before she turned the cameras on, okay? So Arya, would you do the honors? Beep, boop, beep, bop. Okay, this is our Fermi estimate, but now for a sanity check. How close did we get, Arya? According to an estimate of white sharks off Central California, the population of great white sharks off the coast of California is estimated to be between 300 and 400 individuals. Look at that. We started with odds in the millions, multiplied it by numbers in the billions, and then started pulling stuff out of our hats. And this is how close we came within a factor of three of a very esoteric number. The current population of great white sharks swimming off the coast of California right now, come on. You gotta be impressed by that. Unless you're a seal. That's not good news. This is the real advantage of the Fermi estimate. It's so useful that I think all of you should learn it and practice it. And I believe in this so much that I'm going to do something I've never done here at the facility. I'm going to work through a number of these problems with you in real time with no fancy editing or camera tricks to edit out my mistakes or if I get something totally wrong. Are you sure that's a good idea? Well, that's a good thing about science, Aria. It works whether or not you believe in it. I didn't steal that from a 
inspirational quote that's been, shut up. As I said at the top of the video, today's episode is sponsored by KiwiCo. KiwiCo is a perfect sponsor for today's episode about mathematical thinking because it is a monthly subscription box with the explicit purpose of getting kids and families excited about practicing the principles of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Each KiwiCo box comes with everything that you need to complete the month's puzzle or brain teaser or build or make. No running to the store to buy extra supplies like duct tape. What aisle is that even in anymore? And the mind and problem solving skills you need to complete the context of each box are perfect for engendering the kind of skills in kids and young people that they will need to solve today's problems tomorrow. KiwiCo also has families and availability in mind. It ships to now more than 40 countries and provides hours of science -y entertainment each month, no matter if you are eight, 108, or immortal like me. If you wanna try KiwiCo like I did, you can go down into the description of this video or go to kiwico.com slash Kyle to get 50% off any first box of your choice. It's the perfect gift or monthly activity to get your mental gears a spinning. It, I mean, look, I just, I made an air hockey table right on my desk here. It's perfect, especially if you're doing Fermi estimations all day like yours truly. <laughs> Let's get back to that. Okay, so to prove the power of the Fermi estimate method, I had Aria write down some Fermi problems on some sheets of paper that I used to estimate the strength of a nuclear explosion. And keep in mind, I have not seen these or thought about these beforehand. I'm gonna try to do them in real time here with you without any fancy editing to hide all my mistakes and whatnot. I might cut here and there to save you time, but we're gonna do this. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna, Aria, if you could uh, hand me the sheets of paper, please. Okay, let's get started. Thanks. Uh, you can go. If, if you never cut your hair in your whole life and it grew continuously, how long would it be? Okay. So another hair question. What we do, uh, start from the place of confidence, right? With our numbers as we're throwing out numbers, right? So I know approximately that hair grows what, five millimeters a um, week? Does that sound right? So five millimeters a week. And then we would start our dimensional analysis. So if we start five millimeters a week, we know that there are 52 weeks. Oh, that's the wrong, I didn't. 52 weeks in a one year and the average person uh, lives 72 years in one life, oh, I messed it up again. There's 52 weeks in one year. <laughs> and it's not, a, not pretty when, you, when you're just doing it like this. Uh, 52 weeks in one year, and there's about 72 years in one lifetime. So in how long will your hair get per, in, in millimeters in one whole lifetime? Well, if we multiply these things to get my calculators out of batteries, that's, that's, that's perfect. That's perfect that this is. Uh, so in... So we have five milliliters, millimeters times 52 weeks times 72 is equals 18,720 millimeters, which if we divide by a thousand to get meters, we have 18.72 meters, which is roughly a lot of feet. <laughs> so I'm gonna say that it's around 18 meters if you let it go. Next question we got from Ari is, how many points were scored in the NBA total last season? Well, if you wanna know anything about sports, you came to the right guy. So uh, how many, so okay, so total number of points. Let's throw out some numbers and let's bound the question, right? I know there's not five points scored in an NBA game. I also know there's never 200 points scored in an NBA game. I think uh, it's around 100, something like that. 
and each team is gonna score around 100. Again, if we're going order of magnitude, it's not 10, it's not 1,000, let's say 100. So each team is gonna score combined 200 points per game total, right? So 200 points, if we're estimating 100 points per team, 200 points per game. Now, how many games are in an NBA season? I have no idea. Is it, is it dumb like baseball so that the win percentages don't really mean anything? Uh, I'm gonna say 100. It's somewhere between like 90 and 200, right? Again, we're, we're bounding here. So I'm gonna say that there are 100 games per season, right? And now we cross out games and we get points per season. Points per season, but is that total? Yeah, right? 20,000, 20,000 points per season. Okay, <laughs> come on Aria, that was an easy one, right? How many dump trucks would it take to haul away all of Mount Everest? That one is significantly harder. We're humans, we have technology. Why don't I just, the Fermi estimate will be for something that'd be much harder, the dump trucks. Uh, we know, we can calculate the volume of Everest. Everest has been measured all over the place. So um, I'm gonna look up the volume of Everest. No, this isn't cheating. This is using what we have. Okay. The volume of Everest is 2.1 times 10 to the 12th cubic feet. Okay. So, 2.1 trillion cubic feet. How big is a dump truck? Well, I've, I've st stood next to a large dump truck before. So I'm gonna say that, hmm, okay, so I've stood next to a dump truck. Dump trucks are pretty tall. I'm gonna say they're twice my height. So, and, and, and width-wise, length-wise, they're, they're twice, let's go three times my, my body length, because they're big trucks, and then twice my body length for the width, okay? I'm just, I'm, I'm estimating a very complicated thing just based on how big that I remember it being next to me. Sounds like not a great method, but, that's the power of Fermi. So um, I'm gonna say that one truck can hold a volume that is equivalent to what I just said. So my body length, um, I'm gonna go, the height is six feet times 18 feet times 12 feet for the volume of the truck. And so this is gonna equal cubic feet. So that cubic feet, cubic feet will cancel out there, and I will get a value that will be, I'll get a value for the number of trucks that we need to haul away all of Mount Everest if you ever wanted to do that because you're a crazy person. I'm not slow at typing, you are. You get 1.6 billion dump trucks. Wait a second, something about this basketball estimation has to be off. 20,000 points sounds like it's way too few considering that someone like Stephen Curry is scoring 2,000 points in a single season. I didn't have to look that up. So instead, why don't I, hmm, I'm gonna go back to the drawing board a little bit. So instead of 200 points per game for both teams, I think that's an incorrect unit to have. Instead, I'm gonna go 100 points per game per team. Yeah, so each team is scoring 100 points every single game. I'm still estimating that there's 100 games in a season, because I have no, I don't know how many there are. And I know that there are 32 teams. So now, if I multiply 32 times 100 times 100, that's 320. 20,000 points per season, which is a lot 
but I think, or at least hopefully, it will be a lot closer to whatever the true number is. Okay, did you follow along with me? Did it all make sense? How did our Fermi estimation go? Points, in total number of points uh, in an NBA season, how long your hair would be if you never ever cut it and it grew continuously, how many dump trucks you'd need to haul away all of Mount Everest. Okay, so if everything I've set up until this point is true, then we're getting pretty close to some accurate answers that you wouldn't know off the top of your head. So let's see how we did. Okay, so how did we do? I did not look up anything. I have not calculated anything yet. So let's see. Eh? Eh, see, that's not so bad. We might be off by a factor of two or five or 10 somewhere, but usually with these kinds of estimates, we don't need to be exactly right in order to say something accurate about a situation or to make a decision and move forward. Clearly, this is an incredibly powerful way of thinking, but it does have its pitfalls. If you're not at least starting from some place of confidence, some fact or figure that you know, you might be way off in modeling the situation and up and down over and under estimates won't cancel out like they're supposed to. Enrico Fermi was so good at this because he was like a genius on the Manhattan Project and stuff, so he had a lot of places of confidence he could start from. But as long as you keep all that in mind, Clearly, the, the advantages are just undeniable. So get out there and get guesstimating. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today especially I want to recognize research assistant Cody Peden and visiting scholar Jackie Gatt. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, get behind the scenes photos, join my discord, talk every day with me, get private members only live streams with yours truly, not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, get your name on Aria here each and every week. Lucky you. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of you. So I have no idea how I'm going to pass. The if you really like Fermi estimates, which are very fun to work through, some are impossible to look up, but it's always a good thought experiment and brain exercise. If you really want to try some more, I will post a PDF of like a hundred extra Fermi problems that you can try with uh, alone or with your family or with your kids. I'll post them in the comments below. Get calculating, but only if you have a TIA to nine titanium. Texas Instruments sponsor us. Thanks for watching. I mean, you can have any calculator you want, I don't care.